Okay, so we have about three minutes until showtime, but Miss Barbara, you're the only one from your team, so. Kelsey is Kel here. Oh, Kelsey, okay. Um, but yeah, I just emailed everyone to make sure that they know that it's at five. <laughs> okay. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, Barbara. How are y'all? Good, Trisha. How about you? I'm doing good. Yeah. You guys have been busy. Yeah. I've seen everything that you all have been posting. It's amazing. You've really, really stayed on top of everything. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It takes the teamwork to make the dream work, right? <laughs> <laughs> well said. That's what so makes the dream work. <laughs> dream work makes the dream work. That's right. <laughs> we are, uh, you're working. How are you doing, Barbara? There? We're, doing, we're doing well. And I noticed seeing Kelsey Lowe's uh, in the paper with the, the Arboretum with those wonderful goats. I can't wait to come over <laughs> oh. and see them. So cool. Yeah, the uh, yeah. goats were a huge, huge, uh, huge <laughs> They're gone now, but they oh. we hope to get them back in November. That was brilliant. It was a oh, brilliant okay. idea. Yeah. Were you in charge of hurting them? <laughs> I, got to help, I got to help one day. Um, it was pretty amazing. There were 142. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Did they do what, did they do what they were supposed to do? Did they eat up? Yes. Yeah. It, it was really amazing. The amount of work that they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you getting good crowds at the Arboretum? Are people starting to come back? Actually, they never left that they, they actually got, they came out more. Um, wow because we're outdoor trails, right? So it's safe yeah. to walk around. Um, so we've had very low program income because people don't want to do virtual programming, which fair enough. Um, but our parking has been absolutely record breaking. Wow. So people do have to pay for parking and we've never had as many people parking at the Arboretum before. about the outdoors and opportunities mm -hmm. away from the computer. Yep. Yeah, these days every opportunity to do something in person is precious. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that the truth? One of these days I'll see you all in person. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's only three of us, unless I'm mistaken, and we need two more, correct? Right, correct. correct. And Tricia, you've had no further word uh, from um, Heather, have you? And that she's probably not going to tune in. Yeah, I can go ahead and email her. She did say that if there was a problem with the quorum, that we could. Uh, her only problem was just a, sm a spotty connection because she's out of town right now. So right. she was worried that she'd be in and out. So let me go ahead and send her an email. I know we had issues yesterday when we were doing our um, our evaluations. She she was kind of in and out. Uh, oh, there's Tracy. Tracy. Oh, there's Tracy. Okay, good. And then we may not have Andy also, I understand. Yeah. So it looks like we're waiting on Ho Jim. Ho Jim is coming on right now. All right. Right. Oh. I was really <laughs> nervous. <laughs> <laughs> is it just me buzzing or does that sound for everybody? Um, yeah, I gotta move my husband. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if we're hearing Ho Jin. No, he's muted. No, Ho Jin, can you please just test your audio real quick? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, better. He doesn't Thank sound you. like a robot anymore. No. <laughs> um, I'm trying to use my headset. For some reason, it's not letting me use my headset. Oh. Very strange. I'm converting to headset. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Yeah, is that her? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Miss Christy, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Um, Miss Chair, it's 502 now, and you may start the meeting. All right. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I am Barbara Breshen. Chair of the City of Sugarland, Texas Parks Advisory Board meeting. It is 5.02 p.m. and the board's uh, October 3rd, 13th, 2020 meeting is now called to order. Do we have any public comment this evening? No, ma'am, we do not. Uh, hearing that we have no public comment, we'll move on to item three, workshop, review of and discussion on updates to the park Recreation and Open Space Master Plan, Joe Chesser, Director, Kimberly Terrell, Assistant Director, and Fonlandu, Park Development Manager. Please go ahead. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, we're going to take this opportunity tonight to uh, review progress that we've made on the Parks Recreation and Open Space Master Plan. Uh, first, all, I'm going to do kind of a brief introduction of kind of you know, the general background on the master plan, and then I'll hand it off to uh, Phone Lynn and then ultimately to Kimberly. And Phone Lynn can go over development updates, and then Kimberly can go over the events and recreation updates. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as you may recall, when we went through the master plan process, the reason we do that is because the city's comprehensive plan or the overall plan for the city identifies eight separate master plans that the, the, the various departments are in charge of and they update them generally on, depending on the master plan, generally a five to 10 year cycle. Ours and Parks has generally been about a 10 year cycle uh, because it, it takes that long usually to try to get through the priorities that are identified in the plan. Uh, other other uh, master plans in the city and it's a wide variety of things for everything from like water and wastewater to drainage to mobility uh, pedestrian bicycle plan so you can see it's just a wide variety of plans that the city does um, to try to keep up with and, and one of the main reasons we do this is it ties back to the city council's goals that they set as part of the comprehensive plan and then it also keeps, as you have change in, in council members, like this year, there's one seat that's going to be vacant. A new council member comes in. Having these plans in place keeps a continuity together. So um, councils that have been seated can, can have their work continue on into the future. And so when a new council member comes in, we do orientations of the council members. And part of the orientation is to talk to them about the priorities set forward in our various master plans. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. Um, and then if you'll recall back in uh, 2016, 2017, uh, we had quite a few uh, meetings with the Parks Board. Uh, the Parks Board acted as our steering committee on the, on the project. It was about an 18-month process to work through the master plan. It, it, it involved a lot of uh, community input. We had citizen surveys to find out what the needs of the community and the desires of the community were. And then we had uh, two town hall meetings where people met at City Hall and had opportunities to look at plans and make comments and provide their input. And in addition to those um, survey opportunities, we just had an ongoing, what's called an online town hall, uh, where people can go to the city's website and go to the page and make comments on uh, the plans and things that they'd like to see. So we felt like we had a really robust uh, community input process on the master plan. And so we feel like the, the planning itself really captured the community's uh, input and, and what they felt strongly that we needed to do going forward in the future uh, to develop the park system here in Sugarland. Uh, we had specific workshops with, with the parks board uh, where we really looked at, at needs analysis, the 
policy issues that um, you know needed to be addressed as part of the plan. And then really our ultimate goal was to develop prioritization for uh, future uh, activities of the plan. Uh, you might notice from the picture here, one of the one of the parks board members there is Stuart Jacobson, who is now one of our council members. So and he's been very supportive of our, our efforts in parks uh, as both a parks board member and then as a city council member. The plan was it adopted in February of 2018. Like I mentioned before, it runs on about a 10 year uh, cycle uh, to try to implement and then probably in nine to 10 years, we will look at repeating the process again, uh, just like we did uh, in 2016 and 2017. And then uh, as, as part of the process, we submitted for award through uh, Houston Galveston Area Council and received an honor award for our, our, our master plan as part of their their planning uh, um, and, and planning section for parks and natural areas. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as part of the, the, the city council's uh, work in developing the comprehensive plan, they established uh, really goals and, and guiding principles for the city uh, to implement various ways to keep the, the community active and lively and attractive and safe uh, and, and just a general desirable uh, place to live. And so they have basically 11 different guiding principles and goals that they identified uh, in their last effort uh, of, of comprehensive planning. And, and the park system touches on five of these goals, uh, des destination activity centers, outstanding cultural arts, education and recreational opportunities, environmentally responsible community, great neighborhoods and beautiful community. So in, in developing our plan, we broke it down in these five different categories. And when we set the priorities, we tied our priorities back to these council's goals. So uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so we have these five areas and then we have various projects and programs and, and, and activities that are identified in the master plan. And then we kind of have them cate category, categorized uh, in these various categories. And so in the last um, little under two years now, uh, they've gone the plan. Um, actually, I guess we're, we're over two years now, 2018 or 2020. So it's been over two years now. So we've had uh, the ability to address some of the priorities that were identified in the plan. And under destination activity centers, you'll see some of the, some of the things that we've done. And destination activity centers are things that kind of get members of the community out into the various locations in the city where people can, you know, see their neighbors, interact with other people in the city. And then also the destination centers can also be places that would bring people from outside the community of Sugarland to come to Sugarland and uh, kind of experience what it's like here. And I think it helps build a reputation for the city. Sometimes that can also lead to economic uh, development activity for the city by bringing others in and hopefully they'll stay for some days or spend money at restaurants and and shopping and things like that. So we kind of look at our opportunities to bring people out and, and interact in the community. And Funland's going to go over some of these projects in more detail uh, a little later on in the presentation. Uh, to kind of been more kind of specifically talk about uh, these these particular projects uh, and activity centers and then under cultural arts we've um, developed things like public art in the in the parks and that's just a, a draw and it also just it adds to the vibrancy of the community and and visual appeal so some of these sort of cross cross boundaries or, or, or categories on here like some of the things with the arts can also go with kind of our beautiful communities uh, goal. And so um, th they all kind of kind of cross over in some some aspects and things like uh, environmentally responsible 
our sustainability in the parks are some of the things that we've been doing, such as developing pollinator gardens and butterfly gardens, which not only enhance the beauty and, and the sustainability of the community, but they also kind of keep us from having to do as much mowing in the parks and as much grooming. Uh, so they're just become beautiful areas, but they're also lower maintenance and sustain sustainable areas for us. Also working on developing a recycling program at our events. Uh, we have a pilot program in one of our parks. We'd like to look at more uh, recycling. Unfortunately, the market for recycled material isn't as strong as it was a few years ago. So uh, the push for recycling is not as strong right now as it was, but it's still something we, we like to focus on because we think it's being just good stewards of the land to do that. Uh, under great neighborhoods, uh, we've had you know, neighborhood projects, Mayfield's an example you'll hear a little bit more about, uh, and just kind of generally upgrading our spaces to make them more uh, desirable locations. And then under beautiful and natural naturalized areas, you'll, you'll see some photographs on that. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Fon Lin and let her go through the next slides, uh, which are actually examples uh, of these, these various priorities. Thank you, Joe. Uh, next slide, please. Good evening, everyone. It's really great to see you all again. I miss you all uh, in the master plan workshops. We worked so hard on the master plan. I hope everyone is doing well and stay safe. Um, uh, thank you, Joe, for a great introduction and outline of the parks development projects we have accomplished in the last uh, two years. Under Jill and uh, William's leadership, we have done a lot of uh, projects and uh, they are well aligned with the master plan goals. So I'm going to explain more details on a few projects. You probably have already um, heard or be, uh, you are aware of those projects from the previous parks board meetings. Now it's great that we can overview them all together uh, again. Colina Park is identified as a regional park in the Parks Master Plan. We have been uh, working closely with Colina Park Conservancy to make improvements using the funding from donations and grants. Phase one construction was complete, uh, completed last fall and has welcomed hundreds of visitors weekly, especially during COVID-19. Um, what you see are a couple of photos uh, from last one, uh, last summer for phase one. Next, please. The phase one improvement includes a restroom, a new uh, uh, overlook, boardwalk, concrete trail, signage and wayfinding. Uh, we also cleared the south end of White Lake for a boat launch. William has been working with Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, Department preparing the White Lake Management Plan. Next slide, please. The wayfinding has been an issue in Colony Park for a number of years. So earlier this year, we used the tree marking paint to cover the trees, the tree trunks uh, with colors so that it's easier for the users to navigate in the existing uh, natural trails. Uh, this spring, we worked with a group of wonderful Boy Scout, uh, I'm sorry, Girl Scout, uh, to add additional wood direction, uh, directional signs by wood. They look really lovely in the park. At the same time, we collaborated with the Conservancy and uh, won the Cameral Foundation grant of $18,000 to implement more permanent signs. Uh, we just complete the signage design in-house. Uh, here are a few examples. The left one is an um, interpretive sign for the Colony Park background, and then on the right are a few trail signs examples. Uh, they are being manufactured now, and uh, we'll, our maintenance group will install them, uh, hopefully in the next couple of months. Next, please. In 2018, we assisted the Conservancy to win the Texas Parks and Wildlife Trail Grant of $200,000. Since then, we have worked with the Conservancy and the consultant TBG 
and complete the conceptual design of phase two trails with additional parking. In order to preserve the wetlands and uh, poten uh, potential archaeological sites, the new trails will be mainly on the south and uh, southeast side of the White Lake. Currently, we are uh, in the process of starting the uh, construction documentation of phase two. Next, please. The Conservancy also had a TBG complete the conceptual design of a nature discovery area, and we um, assisted and attended the workshops. Uh, I hope we can uh, implement this project when the funding is in place. Next, please. The Brazil Park additional implementation is also part of the key action items to achieve regional destination goals. In FY19, we collaborated with some local disc golf uh, enthusiasts to lay out and implement the uh, nine hole disc golf course at Brazil Park. They also help us um, to maintain the disc golf area. Next, please. As part of the 2013 bond election project, we worked with engineering department and uh, consultant Kimberly Horn to, impl uh, to implement a connector road between Brazzaville Park and uh, Memorial Park. This connection will increase the accessibility and the park usage of Brazzaville Park. The project will also include uh, um, a meandering eight foot trail that connects both parks uh, which will make a total of about eight miles of continuous trails available for the residents. Uh, this project is currently in construction. Next, please. Nimura Park is our most popular park. Um, so in the last two years, we improved the Justin P. Brindley Trail and relocated the entrance to address the Brazilian erosion issues. Our maintenance crew also built a wood fence along the South Meadow Loop Trail to protect people from the erosion areas. There are a few other projects I'm going to mention in the, uh, later in the presentation. Next, please. City Park is our oldest park. The Parks Master Plan recommends quite a few improvements in this park. Um, the City Park Skate Park has been very popular for our young adults and the teenagers. Um, however, the equipment was near its end of use for life, and we had to make constant repairs in the last several years. Uh, William puts a lot of effort in the park facility assessment and constantly analyzes the priorities based on the public safety and the budget. Uh, finally, this summer, we worked with American Ramp Company and renovated the skate park with new and more durable equipment. Next, please. Another project we have done in City Park for adult sports is we resurfaced the tennis court. Due to the demand of the pickleball activities from our seniors, we also took this opportunity and strapped the four pickleball courts overlapping with the tennis court. When the 7th Street drainage project took place, we worked with the engineering department and renovated the parking lot next to the tennis court. We got a brand new concrete parking lot out of it. <laughs> next, please. Um, City of Sugarland has nine miles of parks and open space along Brez River. The Brez River Corridor Master Plan was performed about um, more than seven years ago. Um, the, the, this, the site plan is on the right, was done by Clark Condon. Um, this plan has guided the design and the implementation of our major regional parks, including Memorial Park and Brazzaville Park. We are currently updating this master plan in-house in order to study further on the additional parkland parcels, guide the future amenities, as well as parkland acquisition. Under Joe's directions, William and I have done um, site visits, site analysis, programming study, adjacent parcel ownership research, and a conceptual design study for about a half of the corridor now. 
This effort continues in between our other higher priority projects. Next, please. Uh, this is a quick example of the Brazover landing and the Oxbow parcels. We visited the site a few times to understand the site characters, opportunities, and constraints. We also did a research on the wetland map, soil map, topo map, and the parcel ownership in this area. Uh, based on the findings, we did some conceptual design using hand sketches and in AutoCAD. Next, please. This is another example of how we studied the opportunity of having additional amenities, including parking, trails, and disc golf in the Brazilville Park and the Memorial Park area. Uh, this process also allows us to be able to proactively plan for future development. So um, when any project opportunity comes up, we are able to take immediate actions with the big picture in mind. Next, please. You're familiar with this signage and wayfinding project. Uh, we um, have assisted the engineering department um, over the, the project process. Our goal is to have unified signage system throughout the parks and the city. That's also part of the regional destination goals. Next, please. Um, we also facilitated to sign the mountain bike trail license agreement in FY19. Since then, we have had a wonderful collaboration with Fort Bend Mountain Bike Association to improve several mountain bike trails. Uh, William works with the association leadership group very closely to make sure everything is in compliance with the agreement and also uh, uh, make sure they add value to our community, not just the bikers. Uh, most recently, we are working with the EMS to register the sub-segments of the mountain bike trails uh, in the GIS and the 911 system, so that when somebody calls 911 from those trails, our first responders can find him or her fast for to save lives. Uh, next, please. As Joe mentioned earlier, in the Parks Master Plan process, many residents expressed the interest of art in the public space as the expression of community culture and identity. Uh, through the generous donations from Sugarland Legacy Foundation and other private organizations, we implemented the eagle sculpture at Sugarland Memorial Park. In this project, we provided the conceptual design, construction documentation, and that the construction. Next, please. This uh, Sugarland fan is a magnificent piece of artwork that was done by the artist Charlie Vale. We proudly hosted at the Imperial Recreation, Imperial Park Recreation Center hallway. Next, please. The artwork at uh, Brazil Park Overlook was installed in the fall of 2018. Uh, since then, our team have assisted in maintenance and, re and minor repairs. This art has been appreciated by many Brazilian Park users and in multiple events. Next, please. The new Mayfield Park was implemented in uh, spring 2018. Many of you attended the open ceremony with us. Um, based on the community feedback, the city applied a CDBG funds, uh, which is a community development block grant to add a prefabricated restroom here. We provided the conceptual design um, uh, in-house. Uh, what do you see on the uh, screen? The left is the site plan sketch, and uh, the right is the uh, restroom rendering we did. Next, please. The project is currently in construction. The restroom was just installed, uh, installed uh, about a week ago. The contractor is working on the hardscape in front of the restroom. After that, our maintenance group will install the planting and the irrigation in-house. Next, please. In order to achieve environmentally responsible community goals, uh, we constantly try to have uh, best practices enhancing sustainability in parks. Um, working with Keep Sugarland Beautiful, we organized the annual tree planting 
in both 2018 and uh, 2019. Uh, we planted about 500 to 600 native hardwood uh, trees in Brazil Park. The 2018 event won Project of the Year, awarded by uh, Houston Area Urban Forest Council. In addition, uh, with donations from Houston Wilderness, we improved the Sugarland Memorial Park Butterfly Garden and the Wildflower Meadows at the Brazil Park. Um, many volunteers have helped with those projects and uh, put in hundreds of volunteer hours for the community sustainability. Next, please. Um, this first picture shows the Pony Little Garden uh, planting event in, we hosted in November 2019. Um, the other two pictures were taken this spring and fall. A number of high school uh, volunteers have been working very hard to help maintain this garden. I did a quick calculation this morning. They put, about, they put in about 340 hours of effort into this garden wholeheartedly during this pandemic. Uh, since mid-March. The butterfly garden is more than a contribution to the environmental sustainability. Most importantly, it gave us opportunities for our young generations to learn about nature and to take ownership in community improvements. Next, please. Uh, these are some pictures showing the wildflowers in Brazil Park and uh, Colony Park in spring and early summer. Next, please. In the last two years, we have had a very tight budget overall. Um, as you can tell from the projects I just mentioned, we have been taking every public-private partnership opportunity for parking improvements. Uh, the projects that have successfully done have been successfully done throughout the through the partnership are Colony Park Phase One and Two, the Eagle Sculpture, Mountain Bike Trail improvements, Brazil Park reforestation and uh, Pony Nature Habitat, uh, Brazil Park Nine Hole Disc Golf Course, Sugarland Memorial Park Butterfly Garden. Moving forward, we continue to look for public-private partnership as well as grant opportunities during this challenging time. Next, please. As part of the park activity monitoring action item, we work with the police department on park safety. And also we use the help of uh, public works to record the park usage data. The left chart uh, shows the average daily traffic volume in major parks in 2019. Uh, Memorial Park and Eldridge Park had significantly more visitors, uh, probably around a thousand uh, vehicles daily in each park. Um, the second, the, 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 the one on the right shows the increasing number of visitors in Colin Park since 2016 when we adopted. We gathered the data in order to understand the park, park usage and the performances more accurately and allocate resources accordingly. Next, please. We also use every opportunity to make our parks more visually appealing to achieve beautiful community goals. From planting design to park maintenance, we constantly pay attention to colors, textures, seasonal interests, placemaking, and the wildlife habitat. Here are a few examples from Memorial Park, Eldridge Park, and the Smart Financial Center Plaza. There's a lot of design and the maintenance effort behind the beautiful scenes. Next, please. These are more examples uh, from West Creek Park, Reservoir Park, City Park, and the Memorial Park. Parks and open spaces are significant greens infrastructure for the community. Visually appealing park amenities motivated people to exercise outside, um, stay physically and mentally healthy. This has become even more important during the pandemic. The parks, recreation, and the open space master plan has been a great roadmap for our daily work in the last two years. We worked very hard to align our priorities with the master plan recommendations so that we, have, we are able to serve our residents well 
for their health and the quality of life. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all again for being the steer, steering committee, committee in the master plan process and offering your invaluable opinions on behalf of the residents. Also, thank you, Barbara, for writing the uh, recommendation letter when we apply for the HGAC um, uh, planning award. Now I'm going to turn this presentation to our assistant director, Ms. Kimberly Terrell on the updates for recreation and events. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, for recreation and events, we fall primarily under these three categories, destination activity center, outstanding cultural arts, educational and recreational opportunities and great neighborhoods. Next slide, please. So our first item is the park user fee review. Um, building on the work that we did in 2017 or 2018 on the membership fees, we are currently in the process of conducting a comprehensive citywide fee study. Um, in the parks department, this is mainly looking at all of our fees, including building rentals, field rentals, park rentals, our pavilion rentals, um, youth sports, and memberships as well. Next slide, please. For public-private partnerships, we are very fortunate to be able to partner with individuals who teach our classes and our facilities and our parks. By being able to do this, we are um, we're able to not have to hire additional staff to teach these classes, but we can partner with, uh, with, with these agencies and um, we actually earn revenue for the classes as well. Another good example is our youth sports. The city of Sugarland is a little bit unique in how we work with our YSAs. Uh, they, we do all the basic maintenance, and, but they do all the specific maintenance on the fields, including all the grooming, fertilization, all the turf work that, that goes into that. Um, also, some cities have um, conduct their own, their own youth sports, but we're able to work with these organizations to provide that recreational need for our community. Next slide, please. I know that Fung Lin touched on this a little bit already, but we're very proud of, um, of our ability to be able to, to restripe our tennis court to, um, for pickleball. It worked out really well timing wise for us because the, the, the courts were due to be restriped and resurfaced anyway. So we were happy that this worked out timing wise that we were able to accommodate this usage. Next slide, please. So one of the action items in the master plan was to continue to evaluate additional opportunities for community events um, in the parks and our event facilities. So two of those events that are highlighted here were Food Truck Fridays and our Movie Under the Moon. And Movie Under the Moon actually um, supported another goal as well, which was uh, to consider adding special events programming to Oyster Creek Park. Next slide, please. Um, Another action item was to evaluate the feasibility of discontinuing non-resident memberships. The fee study that we conducted in 1718 um, resulted in an increased non-resident fees. And this combined with the annexation of Greatwood New Territory has reduced the non-resident membership to under 10%. So we didn't feel the need to, um, to discontinue non-resident memberships. Next slide, please. In events, uh, one of the recommendations was to evaluate opportunities and implement sponsorships or third party involvement in the 4th of July event. We did this very successfully last year um, with a complete sponsorship of the event by a private party and um, also by, uh, by the radio station. Um, and we were on target for working with the radio station in 2020 um, as a larger sponsor, but unfortunately we weren't able to have that event. Next slide, please. Um, the master plan has guided us to perform a study to determine um, if the existing senior center can be enlarged or expanded to increase the space and programming opportunities. As you all know, um, a lot of our classes are, um, are usually full and have waiting lists, so this was an important priority for us. Um, this, in, this project um, involved uh, looking at existing center, but also considering alternate locations. Uh, we're currently in process 
progress on this project, but we're doing internal work. One of the biggest parts of this is going to be the public input portion, um, which due to the kind of the current environment of COVID, we really feel like it's best to wait um, to wait until after after things have, have kind of picked back up into, into normal because um, that portion is so crucial to this project. So this we're, we're doing some internal work, but for the most part, this project is currently on hold. Next slide, please. The Block Party trailer, we're really excited about. Um, it hasn't had much use um, lately, I guess, since, uh, since the spring, but this was born out of the special event strategic project that came from the recommendation of the master plan to evaluate events and to look at additional opportunities for community events. Um, it also helps satisfy one of the other action items um, of increased communication and sharing of resources with the area HOAs. And we're gonna be excited when this, when this project picks back up again. Next slide. That is all of uh, my recreation and events items, but I am happy and I'm sure the group is happy to answer any questions that you may have. Ms. Barber, you're muted. Thank you all for your comments. And now, uh, as we've done in prior meetings, I'd like to call on each of the board members who are attending this evening for any comments that they have for staff or for the rest of us, uh, beginning with um, Joan Hansen. Joan, you're muted. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> I'd just like to say how really beautiful the presentation was. Every time I sit and hear about all the things that uh, are being done in the city for the benefit of the, uh, the people in Sugarland, which I'm one of them, I'm just so pleased and I appreciate the, the beautiful presentation that the ladies put together and all that they're doing. So I'm just so pleased. I particularly uh, loved looking at the Eagle sculpture and all the photographs are beautiful too. So thank you so much ladies for all you're doing and all of you really, thank you. Thank you, Joan. Uh, Kelsey Johnson. Yeah, it was a great summary of um, all the projects in the last two years to, to demonstrate to the board how these are in alignment with the master plan. Um, and I was really impressed too with just as, as Joe, you said that a lot of these overarching goals have overlap, you know, so that really showed forth in the presentation in terms of how some projects are both beautification projects and environmentally sound projects that, um, you know, we're, we're able to steward the land wisely, as you said. Um, I wondered if you could speak to um, any plans for um, new picnic facilities or any of the other things that were mentioned um, in the in the master plan in terms of citizen input. I remember seeing that um, shade structures and picnic facilities were particularly high on the list of citizen input. Um, maybe I will start and then if ahead, Joe. Tom. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, we are. It's very hot here, so uh, our city really love canopies. Uh, one thing is we try to provide tree canopies uh, next to the trails, picnic uh, picnic areas. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is like uh, the Brazil River Park, uh, we actually um, added the picnic tables behind the restroom. And then at the same time, we added about uh, uh, five, four, uh, I think it's four or five uh, shade trees next to it um, uh, in the uh, Brazil River uh, Connector Road project, uh, we actually, you know, Joe, William and I, we actually went to the site, worked with the contractor to pick, to try to preserve as many trees as possible. Um, um, also, uh, in the Mayfield Park restroom project, uh, there's a picnic table right next to it. We um, Taking advantage of this project, we try to add a few um, shade trays next to the picnic table. Um, and shade structures also cover like a pavilions. Um, pavilion typically 
you know, it's more cost. So during the uh, Brez River Corridor Master Plan, we really try to, in a, uh, in a conceptual design sketches, we try to add uh, picnic tables, pavilions in the design. And it's, um, it's just, uh, we, we have those in mind. Whenever funding is available, we, we know where to put them, what, where would be the, be the best uh, places. So um, uh, I, hope, I hope I answered the questions. I would just add to that that we, um, one of the programs that we, we also offer is a, a donor tree and bench program. And uh, that's become really, really popular uh, that we've had just a tremendous number of, of trees added for shade. And then we generally try to tie the donor bench in near, near where shade can go. We, we work with the donor to, to put it, place it where they would like it, but we also try to incorporate it in a generally in a shaded area. Um, you know, to, to, so the bench would be in the shade, specifically kind of to, to picnic tables and pavilions. Most of the time we try to incorporate that in when we do a, like the, a, generally with the master plan of a specific park and then during the construction of it, uh, we try to, try to include picnic pavilions and playgrounds and, and picnic tables and that sort of thing generally is a, as a grouping together. So you've got activities, you know, working with each other with a restroom playground, picnic pavilion, shade structures, and that sort of thing. Uh, so as we plan and continue to go forward, we'll always try to implement those elements all together. Hope that, hope yeah. that answered, addressed your question. Perfect, yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate all your work. Thank you. Uh, Ho Jin Lim, do you have any comments? I do. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, I want to say this is a fantastic recap of all the projects that we've gone through over the years. Uh, I'm very proud of this, this group. Y'all have done a fantastic job over the years. And the progress we're seeing, I'm going to give you an example of the Cullinan Park. I mean, just from, from the beginning, how we y'all took that part from uh, from the city when we got uh, that transferred over from the city of Houston and uh, getting that up to speed. I've been out there just recently. It looks fantastic. The transformation is unbelievable. Anyway, I, I'm very proud of this uh, as a whole. The department, Joe, you and the staff, oh, amazing. Um, thank you for all the work for that. Uh, I do have a question in regards to this. Now, uh, regards to all the work that we've done, uh, hopefully we'll continue to do all the work and with the budget, with I know this COVID has put put some concerns, at least um, a perspective on the the budgets. Um, COVID's could potentially hurt some of the budgets that uh, the parks will, uh, the parks department will be getting. Is that something that we're going to be adjusting somehow? Um, I don't know if you got any word from the council in regards to the budgets that we'll uh, we'll be getting for the following year. I have any comments right on that? Now, you know, I think it's still a little bit of a, a concern that, you know, that they originally put podcasts together and, and we're happy to say that they're actually the the sales tax returns and, and general funding has not dropped off quite as severely as they had originally uh, predicted based on just all general information. So that's definitely in a positive uh, direction there. I still think there's concern that, you know, we're not out of the woods yet and don't exactly know how the recovery is going to show up. You know, everybody's probably heard about the B recovery or the L recovery or the K recovery, uh, um, you know, scenarios. And I think it, they're still trying to determine exactly wh which path it's going to cover. So our budget this year is, is has been very, very conservative. The city, I think, it does a good job of being conservative and trying to be kind of staying on, on the on the careful side and i think that's paid off for us and then you know the number of years that i've been here long enough to see about three different downturns uh on base uh, on on various things from the recession to 9 11 and things like that so the city has done a good job of kind of just overall budget and 
it's not exactly what we'd like to see as a department all the time, but have a realization that, you know, for the whole greater good of the community, we can't always get what we want quite as soon as what we want, but usually it recovers after a year or two and things get back to normal and our budgets start to reflect that, our projects reflect that. So we're all hopeful that, that we'll get back on track here before too long. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, I think that you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Uh, Kelsey Lowe, do you have any comments? Barbara? Uh, Bar uh, Tracy's got to depart, I think. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to go coach some softball, some girls softball at wow. the Imperial Park. So um, I really appreciate everything and I enjoyed the presentation. Have fun. Yeah, have, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Sorry to rush off. <laughs> we'll see you next month. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. All right, uh, Kelsey Lowe. This goes to show you how important parks are. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll pile on the praise like everyone else. It's a fabulous presentation and an absolutely insane amount of work. Um, it's great to catch up because I wasn't there on the council um, or board uh, when all this was originally being discussed. So this is a good catch up. Um, I'm especially excited about all the uh, environmental sustainability um, and especially the interpretation. Um, I know you guys are planning, you showed us the sneak peek of the interpretive signs for Colin and Park. Um, and then that uh, new scheme for the cohesive park signage, the, the colors and the designs. Um, you did, and forgive me if I'm prying into something that hasn't been crystallized yet, but Thanks. You mentioned something about more interpretation along the Brazos River section. Like there was a plan for interpretive signage to go in Brazos River Park or along the Brazos River corridor. Well, um, at, oh, we are right now. We are doing the Brazos River corridor master plan update. Um, signage and wayfinding will definitely be part of it. Uh, we have not discussed in details. Uh, for what those signage looks like or where they are located. Um, but the plan is we kind of continue the process, know where the amenities are, where the entrances are, what's feasible, where the trails are, and then uh, kind of collaborate, like uh, adapt or um, um, apply the signage wayfinding system that Monique and the, the engineering department has been leading, uh, kind of combine those information together to uh, look at the signage and wayfinding uh, system in the Brazzaville Park Corridor. One of the things that both Monlin and William have worked on at Brass River Park is uh, when we've had an opportunity to have sort of an educational interpretive signage there for both the Butterfly Garden and the pollinator uh, wildflower areas. We've got uh, informational signage there that hopefully is, is educational for people to see, you know, what, what the benefit of those areas are. We've also worked with Center Point on the, it's called Right Tree, Right Place program that William's headed up for us, where we get trees from, and from Center Point. And they also provide signage that has educational information about not planting too close to a power line, or if you're going to plant close to a power line, you pro plant the appropriate tree for that so it doesn't get so tall up into the into the power lines. And you know everybody's probably driven down the roads and seen the trees with the V's cut in them or the one side to try to stay out of the power lines. So it's kind of a program just to kind of educate on that. So we do try to try to have some signage when we. If we do a new development or something, we try to implement some signs, but there also is going to be a plan for implementing much more of a wayfinding type signage package down there to go along with these other uh, kind of more educational type signs. And another example is at the Brindley Trail, and it was especially an issue when we first opened it up because, you know, there wasn't a lot of activity down there, so it was kind of warning for the wildlife that you might see, the various poisonous snakes that are there feral hogs, um, some of the other, uh, you know, just general critters that you might encounter when you're there. So we do think it's important to have signage and education uh, in these areas. So it's always something we try to look at and, and signs surprisingly can be fairly expensive. So um, I believe it. You know, 
we have to, you know, and you want them to be graphically appealing and attractive and you want them to be very durable and to stay attractive. So quite a bit of effort goes into it, but it's, it's always something, it's nice to see that in parks. I think it's a nice, nice amenity to have. So we, we do try to implement that as much as we can. Awesome. Yeah. I just, I, I'm amazed constantly at the amount of work you guys do to be all things to all people, um, recreation, education, uh, of all stripes. I'm, I'm amazed that you're able to juggle all these needs and just a huge pat on the back for you guys. Thank you. What would you say, Trisha? Teamwork for the dream work or whatever to make the dream work or whatever. So. But we're going to make the dream work. Teamwork to make the dream work. You need to learn this, Joe. I know. I, that needs to become my mantra. <laughs> it's, our, it's our unspoken mantra in the department. Yeah. Well, you're your own dream team. You guys are amazing. I have to uh, also comment that seeing the plan and what's all been accomplished in the last few years, it's just amazing. Coolinan Park looks just terrific, and I encourage anyone who hasn't been out there what fun it is to take strolls along the, the, the trails out there or just sit at the picnic benches and watch the families enjoying themselves. It uh, really makes you feel good. And also, if you have not been to Parks and Recreation's Imperial Center, uh, that on a Saturday when they're, uh, if you don't get to go in, uh, get there during the week, uh, take advantage of the farmer's market on Saturday and peek in through the windows and see that wonderful art that's along the wall that you can see uh, from outside if you if you can't get there um, on a another day, although they might be open some Saturday mornings. So it's possible you might be able to get in, but that artwork is really, really fun uh, to, to see. And I also want to further congratulate um, Eric, Lou, and Yafa for being Parks and Recreation's uh, uh, volunteers uh, of the year. They both do incredible work. Eric with his butterfly garden, Yafa, uh, I personally know, and what she does with her uh, exercise classes at the Harmon Center and at Imperial Center, she's amazing. I mean, these are tireless people that aren't being paid that are really making a major contribution to our residents and for our residents. So I'm really, really uh, so uh, overwhelmed with what they do and our other volunteers for the Parks Department. I did have a couple of questions and you may have mentioned this, uh, the parks, uh, the Brazos River uh, Park River, uh, Road Extension, when will that be complete? Um, right now, we uh, I think uh, it's hard to predict the weather, but right now the the, uh, the bridge portion is almost done, and then they have aligned the the road and the trail. Um, I th I think uh, it's it's probably safe to say they can done by the end of this year. Oh, that's um, wonderful. Maybe um, it's hard. I cannot promise. Um, I know our engineering department and the. Uh, contract are working very hard. Uh, William uh, meet with them weekly to uh, discuss any issues that uh, looks like the project is moving very fast and very smoothly. Oh, hey, um, by, dodging, by dodging these two tropical storms or hurricanes, they've been able to continue to work and not get slowed down too much. So we kind of, we got very lucky on this project and as everybody in general that, that we didn't get hit by those storms. And, they, they've been making amazing progress. One thing I kind of wanted to point out from those pictures is when they when they come in and, and braid that out, the road's not going to be nearly that wide. The, 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 the uh, clearing goes much beyond what the road is. So what you saw was really the road will be within the middle of that and then the trail will kind of meander kind of in and out on the side. And then we have trees going in and, and it'll all be, it, it won't be quite as, devastating as it maybe looks from the construction pictures. So um, uh, but yeah, they're, they're making great progress and probably end of the year unless we run into weather problems. Yeah, if, if I may add, Joe, um, it it definitely seems like they're on on target, uh, Barbara, for finishing hopefully by the end of the year. And that seems like th that's their goal. But I, th I think it's probably going to end up being maybe a little after the end of the year if I were to be uh, perfectly honest with you just I want to stay optimistic but we're getting into the rainy season and and they've got a lot of concrete to pour on that road and they did start pouring concrete on the road and they're they're definitely it's a 
It's a, a 717 construction out of Rosenberg and they're doing a fantastic job. It's a fairly young company, but they're very advantageous of, of getting our respect and trying to get more business from us. And I've met with them every week and I've seen nothing but excellence out of them and speaking to the engineers and the on-site engineer inspector, he's very pleased with all their pours and all, and all of their work and they're definitely doing due diligence. Uh, I, I talked to Tommy, the inspector, he thinks it's very optimistic to think that they would be done by the end of the year. Uh, but if, if they hit some good weather and keep the pace they're going, it very well likely may be that a majority of their project is done by the end of the year. It may take them a couple of more, a month or two after that to clean up and get the site ready and to get it open. So that's kind of probably where, more where we're at. Thank you all. I, I appreciate that because I can't wait until it's finished. Uh, and another question is about the mo uh, mountain bike trail improvement. I know that we had a lot of citizen comment on portions of that mountain bike trail and wondered if we have had or you have had further comments from citizens as you continue with these improvements. So it's funny you yes, uh, that because one of on my director's report, uh, one of the items was a uh, compliment we've received recently uh, about the work on the availability and the, the mountain bike trail being there and the work that was done and and the general parks in general. And this one was specific to Oyster Creek, but uh, you know, we're getting really positive feedback. And William works very closely with the, the, the leadership of Fort Bend Mountain Bike Association. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we've had a really positive relationship with them. We had a, a Zoom meeting with them a couple of Friday mornings ago to talk all about uh, signage. One of the things that we're really working on right now is a collaboration between uh, fire EMS and uh, the city's uh, police dispatch office to make sure that if somebody does need help down on a trail that they can identify where the location is and get there quick so they'll have a quick response time to get there to get to, to help that person out. So we're all working together really closely on that to try to make sure it's not only within the GIS system uh, that dispatch uses, but also the trail signage on site. So if an individual was to fall and get hurt down there, they would have enough markings down there to know to say that I'm on the, what they, we call the Tower Run Trail at, at Brazos River Park and I'm I'm on section one of the, the tower run trail. So dispatch can look on their GIS map, see where that is, and then to route uh, the ambulance service or whoever needs to go to, to assist them, to get them there quickly. So, uh, so it, it's been a really good collaboration. We're very, very pleased with the way it's turned out. Well, that's they get frustrated with us sometimes because we're really holding them to the, uh, the agreement they get a little frustrated sometimes, but overall it's, it's, it's going very well. Thank you. And that's a wonderful report. So happy to hear because we certainly um, had an opportunity to hear from a number of citizens on those improvements. Now, are, is there any other comment from board members before we move on to the next item? Not hearing any, we'll go on to item four, uh, director's report, uh, Joe Chesser. Yeah, can, or Christy, can you bring this presentation back up? Yes, just a minute. And Christy, thank you very much uh, uh, as a member of the city secretary's office for helping us with our meetings. We really, really appreciate your assistance. Oh, of course. I you know, got out of the slide order. I apologize here. Where does it begin? Um, uh, go up a couple of few more go up. I think it's 46. I think uh, Yeah, starts on slide 46. Okay, so, uh, so we had uh, since we missed last month's meeting uh, had a pretty busy period. So next slide, please. Uh, and Barbara, as you mentioned, uh, both Eric and Yako were um, uh, volunteers of the year, and we're kind of we're probably the only department in the city that ends up getting two volunteers of the year for, for the various programs that we have. Um, 
Eric, as, as we've talked about before, has, has, has really embraced the butterfly garden and really taken it on as a, as a personal interest of his. And uh, he started a website about it and uh, produced a video. Uh, he's also a um, very good student and he's uh, a tennis player. And I think he's getting a scholarship to go play tennis. Uh, Phone Lin, you may know where he was gonna go play tennis or where he was going to school. You know? Well, he's, he's still in the uh, college application. Uh, we have given him very good recommendation. Hopefully that helps him. Um, uh, yeah, he's just amazing Clemens High student. We're very proud of him. He's also got, he's, he's got uh, a one a, who's a junior right now um, following his footsteps. So we're hoping to keep the momentum going that he started uh, with having some of the high school kids volunteering at the at the butterfly garden, um, and uh, Yafa is 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 she, she's she's getting to be one of those people that's like so well known, like Madonna or or Lady Gaga or whatever that you just have a name that you know everybody knows who Yafa is. She's mm -hmm. becoming famous with the uh, in the in the um, the world of our seniors programs. Uh, by doing now with virtual classes along with her very popular yoga classes uh, that she puts on for the seniors um, uh, of the city. So you know, she's very well deserving as a volunteer of the year. So next slide, please. Uh, and during the year we've had uh, two employees that celebrated their 15 year milestone with the city uh, back earlier in the spring before a social distancing and masking, uh, Tommy Jackson, he's one of our crew chiefs. Uh, he started here very young as a, as a general maintenance worker, worked his way up. He's been promoted to a crew chief. Uh, his parks, uh, he, he, he has his own of the city, which includes uh, Memorial Park and Brazos River Park, which are two of our busiest and, and, uh, largest parks to keep up with it includes the dog park so he's done a great job for us as a crew chief and so we recognized him for his 15 years service with the city and then on the right is uh, Charles Reichlick he's also been here 15 years he started also as a general maintenance worker with the parks department and then um, went to work and when, the, when we opened the rec center as a, he kind of wears multiple hats at the rec center. He's kind of the, he's our facility technician, but he also helps with reservations of facilities. And he's just kind of all around and takes care of the recreation center from basketballs to volleyballs, uh, you name it, he, he takes care of it there. And uh, he, he was he was during the uh, social distancing and masking period when his, his award came up. And so that's why I'm in the background <laughs> in the distance from him. So uh, next slide, please. I uh, wanted to recognize uh, Kelsey Johnson and then also Heather Guillen for their assistance with us on uh, the, uh, the review and, and um, judging of the youth soccer, uh, the, I'm sorry, the request for proposals that were submitted by four different soccer leagues uh, for the use of, of of, of Lost Creek Park and Settlers Way Park. Uh, we've gone through a, we feel like a pretty comprehensive process on developing who we think would be the, the ideal soccer group to be uh, leading the program out at Lost Creek Park. As you'll recall, we had a couple of meetings reviewing this uh, issue where we felt like based on the input we were getting from the community that the soccer association that was there wasn't necessarily meeting all of our expectations in terms of, of incorporating league play for either younger kids or the more recreational uh, players. They were very focused on uh, competitive leagues, which they are very successful with, with their competitive leagues. Uh, they're a respected group. We just felt like they weren't necessarily meeting the needs of our community. So uh, we've gone through the process of reviewing and interviewing them 
and, uh, and working towards making a final selection on who we believe will be uh, recommending to go forward with being our recognized sports association there for Lost Creek and Settlers Way Park. Next slide, please. And as Phonelin touched on, we've made very good progress on these two projects. Uh, I, I thought it was remarkable from the earlier picture that you saw of the restroom building, which was was basically a Photoshop or kind of a mock-up of what we thought the building would look like to what it's actually turned out looking like. It just seems almost identical to what the pictures that we were able to present you. And then uh, it's in place now and the contractor's moving forward. We'll, in front of the building, there will be paving between that walkway and where the building is. And there'll be a nice seat wall that's made out of brick and have a, a matching capstone on it that matches the brick on the building and other brick and seat walls that are there, there in Mayfield Park. We think it'll turn out to be a really nice, nice project there. And then on the left, we were talking about the, the roadway connection and the trail, like I was saying, the road won't be nearly as wide as what you're seeing here in the clearing. The road's about 24 feet wide, and then you'll have an eight foot trail that kind of meanders uh, through the trees on the left side of the screen here. And then, so most of all that will be replanted and seeded. And we're working on trying to do some wildflower seeding along the rail, uh, around, along the road where some of this disturbed area is. So we can kind of keep the look that we've started down by the roadway in Brazos River Park and continuing with that with the uh, wildflowers in this area. Next slide, please. Uh, Fun Lens been really, really busy the last few months. We're we're in collaboration with the Public Works Department and uh, TxDOT. Uh, she's doing some design work for the reestablishment of landscaping along the Highway 59 corridor. And that project was, when we did those landscape projects, they were broken out into four different segments when we originally did the design and construction on them. And now as part of her redesign uh, she's having to do the whole entire corridor. Uh, it's a, right now, I think it's at 178 sheets worth of, of landscape design. And basically what it is, we're saving and salvaging what's, um, what's healthy and uh, full grown in this, these areas. But there are some plants that have deteriorated and some that are beyond their useful life that will be coming out. So it's kind of a fill-in project. The city really is getting um, all of this paid for by TxDOT. TxDOT's putting a million dollars in for the reestablishment of this landscape and irrigation. And uh, her work is primarily looking at what's there, uh, determining what needs to be taken out and then putting the plans together uh, so that they can ultimately be bid out by TxDOT and then have these plants replaced. Uh, William's also been very involved in going out and doing site evaluation of should get their comments and then a project on to bidding and construction schedule. They will probably award it sometime around April and months before their contractor gets her or fall before when it kicks off. And here's the uh, compliment from a resident. I think this was through our Facebook or through uh, talking about just how they rate the, how the, the trails have developed to me meander through the Trust Creek and Oyster Creek parks. So it's always nice to hear that they're happy with the things and some of the improvements that are going on. Classes are continuing and, you know, virtual classes try to continue. And after we go back to uh, normal operation uh, in the senior center, uh, we're in place and actually have classes going on virtually to participate uh, rather than coming to the center because we believe, you know, probably it's going to take people to fill in the center, but would also like to continue to, to classes. So uh, that's all in that. And another project we just at the city park pool is very old, a lot of rust, the deteriorating social uh, renovable pumping that connects it to systems. So pools in really good shape. Now we, we uh, replastered it a couple of years pump system. We just uh, put in, we weren't able to open them up because of distancing requirements. Uh, we feel like the pools and really, so um, feel like, you know, to go for quite a few more years. Uh, Fall Fest, the fourth virtual that we've We've got including Memorial Day, uh, July 4th in and Rec Summers, now the Fall Fest. Uh, a lot of interactions. This one we actually had an element and in person. It was held in a lot of the, you know, with, with, with businesses, uh, you know, kind of town. So this was a way to try to incorporate some, some of the businesses in 
uh, get some. Uh, we had scab and some some prizes for that. Uh, we had quite a bit of following. So we feel like people are starting to be interested in the the virtual event. Uh, things things are you know actions and, and more uh, connectivity to things. So thinking as we go forward, when we get more back, try to maintain a, a view those as well. I, Working along the lines of getting people for things, our council, our city council held a retreat back, really interested in trying to bring back some kind of small back out and interacting. And one of the projects that we're working on right now is sort of a, we've at, at uh, Center Plaza for a couple of summers before we did elements of that, having the plaza park become, become a place where we, um, we also to have beer and wine served at this event. We're utilizing the streams already there, are picnic pavilions up uh, in the park, you know, making sure it's safe for everybody. We have protocols in place. Our local health official, doctor who's on retainer by the city to review. We go forward with things to being safety protocols, not only locally what we feel is important to. So we're moving forward with that. We're going to be on four or three days, October 23rd, 30th, and then on November 6th to be able to get every kind of back out and, and have an in-person event do it in the safest possible way. Here's Halloween Town is something that really grid out way back is just a little carnival bigger event at Town Square, ultimately outgrew Town Square. And now we're transitioning it over to, and we're doing this in partnership with uh, uh, the Skeeters, We've provided guidance and support, positioning it into an ongoing event there at the stadium. So that'll happen on October 3rd. We're sort of in a supporting role to run out. Uh, turned our focus back to Haunted House, at eight, which is another event not able to do because of the ends and close proximity that people environment. So we're looking at it for Halloween this year. Next slide, please. We've done. Um, be happy to invite questions. Getting with Joan Hansen. Joan, do you have any? One more time. I just think, as do all your partners in this very much. Makes me proud to be. And no questions. I am really excited about um, strategy in terms of classes and then to have a, um, a virtual in the transition to more face chat too. I think it's really responsive to the red. Thank you. Uh, no questions from the a Fantastic job. Thank you all. I was just going to ask something else, um, and you may not know this. How does the taking the Zoom classes um, to normally be seeing? um coming to events have you know uh, like are all the memland offerings or is there is there a bit of a um we're seeing a hint folks using it so every you know every take off so we've got a huge percentage and um i'm not sure of the of, of our you know our general live um so i i think that that we've also we're also added our offerings to be more in sort of a few different talks we've like a sports we know there are people that that are field chat and chat with people so just exercise classes it, it's as well to try to connect people great great to hear about these uh i can add to that technology that uh or attending uh ken Haley. there are uh, per, those trying to participate and can are um present at the zoom class and uh, so that these opportunity to participate. So you are trying to help in the process, really quite wonderful. You guys have been so creative uh, period when uh, you're not seeing all of the uh, parks and uh, thank you so much for being able to make during this period. It's, it's been really on myself. So thank you. No further business. Joe, did you have any further business for us to for discussion or do you want to make- Say thank y'all for, for all your support. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Um, Provide your input and we appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And there be um, October 13th adjourned. Thank you all very much. Good evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good thank evening. You. Good to see you. Thank you all.